Now, I know I said the last one would probably be my final video of the week, but I think there are some serious final thoughts for consideration. So stick around for my Game Week 29 final thoughts. Okay, for me, one of the key considerations this week that I think a lot of FPL managers will be going through is do they bring in Bruno Fernandes for an Arsenal asset, given that Man United double in 29 and they double in 34. They've also got good fixtures in 30 and 31 as well. Are they suitable replacements for Arsenal players? Especially if you're free hitting, in my opinion, in 32 when... Um, you can just bring in Arsenal players when Man United blank and then bring back the United players straight after. Um, I think it's definitely worth consideration. In my opinion, I think the players that you can bring Bruno in for are probably Odegaard and Martinelli. I think Saka is just too good to get rid of and I think you'll probably end up kicking yourself that you didn't have a spare transfer to use, make a move further down the line because you made this one to bring in Bruno Fernandes. That's talking about Saka. I think Odegaard and Martinelli are definitely replaceable by Fernandez, even maybe for a hit. But I would be um, certainly on the fence about doing it for Bukayo Saka, and I definitely wouldn't do it if it was for a hit. I think if it, yeah. Bruno to Saka as your free transfer is an option, not something I'm majorly keen on. Um, I definitely wouldn't take a hit for it, but Bruno to Odegaard and Martinelli, I think definitely so. Saka, in my opinion, is the strongest of those three Arsenal midfielders. I think he's the best player for a start, and he takes the penalties, and he just gives me the Arsenal talisman vibe, and he's probably going to play the most minutes as well, so he's definitely the strongest of the Arsenal assets. Also, around Bruno, just some general comments. He's definitely come into better form um, post the World Cup. Seems to be almost back to his best when he first joined Man United. Obviously, Casemiro is serving quite a lengthy suspension um, and Ericsson is just weaning himself back into the team and I don't know what that means for Bruno Fernandez's role in the team. I think he either plays on the right hand side which is usually either Anthony or Jadon Sancho um, and I think Ten Hag really likes Anthony out there for the additional width um, that he provides on the right whereas if Bruno played on the right he'd be more likely to, to go inside a bit more and play a bit narrower. That makes me think he might play a deeper line midfield role. And that's where, at the start of the season at least, he was playing as well. And his stats were just not up to it. He definitely wasn't worth 9.6 million or even worth a spot in your team. So, yeah, I just think there's a little bit of uncertainty as to whether he'll play, um, which position he'll play in, sorry. Um, but I do think he's definitely worth considering. Wouldn't bring him in for Saka, definitely not for a hit, but I probably would for Odegaard or Martinelli. Next up is around the Brighton defence. So, like me, you may have played your wild card in game week 26 and then got rid of Estupinian um, in game week 28 for his blank and brought in someone like Ben Chill. Well, that's certainly what I did. And now you're left with two Brighton players and are deciding whether to bring one back in. I'm really considering now, and I said in my team selection video, I was going to buy Luke Shaw, but I'm really considering bringing back my Brighton defenders, especially Estu Pinyan. I think looking at his fixtures and the fact I'm, I'm locked into basically a free hit in game week 32, I think the Brighton defence is a really palatable um, set to bring in. I know other people as well are just considering straight swapping um, Rico Henry for Estu Pinyan as well. I think it could even be worth it for, for a hit. That's the move that seems to be doing the rounds on Twitter or just generally bringing in Estu Pinyan. And to be honest, I'm actually warming up to the idea that Estu Pinyan might be a slightly better option than Luke Shaw. Not because necessarily he's a better player or Brighton or a better team. I just think with the sheer amount of double game weeks they've got coming up and they've got a really nice week this week for clean sheet odds, especially when you compare them to Brentford. I've got them on the bottom left there and Brighton are just by far and away better for clean sheets than Brentford this week. So I think Henry to Estu Pinyan, if you're thinking of that move, it's definitely worth doing. Um, and maybe if you're thinking of bringing in Luke Shaw this week, you could also consider Estu Pinyan instead if you're only doubled up on Brighton because I think he could be a really nice option for the week. And his underlying numbers, 0.2 expected returns per 90, are even slightly better than Luke Shaw's. He's on 0.19 and there's not much in it. But yeah, and obviously Estu Pinyan is slightly cheaper as well. I think about 0.5 million cheaper. So yeah, save a bit of cash, slightly better fixtures, more doubles. I think he's an improvement on Luke Shaw. Um, and I'm slowly warming it up to the idea of bringing Estu Pinyan into my team. Okay, the next one is another player that I've been really thinking about bringing into my team. It's Isaac from, from Newcastle. 
I think he's such a good option, providing he plays. His underlying numbers are absolutely insane. He's the third best forward in the Premier League for you know expected returns per 90. And they're 0.88, which is second only to Darwin Nunes and Erling Haaland at the moment. Obviously, Callum Wilson plays for Newcastle as well, and the, he's the threat really to Isaac's minute, and a very genuine threat as well. Because I think you know they play at a very similar level, and I think Eddie Howe is definitely going to have a bit of a headache as to who he selects. Or, of course, he could play them as a strike partnership and, and see how that work, works out. He's got an unlikely but possible double in game week thirty-one. I believe there's still a chance that that could happen. Um, but yeah, will remains to be seen on that one. But the main reason you'd probably consider an Isaac is that you're an Ivan Tony owner. Ivan Tony, I think, at the moment, having him in your team is 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 fine, but he's a pretty much a guaranteed transfer at some point in time. He's on nine yellow cards, and obviously he's pending an FA investigation into the betting allegations that have been made against him. So he is going to be a transfer out at some point. What you could do this week, and especially if he gets a yellow v. Brighton, Tony, where he only plays one of the double game week that, that he's got this week, you could cut your losses, bring in Isaac now, guarantee yourself, well, say guarantee, higher your likelihood of having a player that plays two games this game week um, if you're a bit worried about the Tony ban um, and someone with some really good stats um, in Alexander Isaac. So yeah, I think he's a decent option to be looking at in your team and especially if you're a nervous Ivan Tony owner like me, yeah, certainly a player that I'm considering bringing in. Next up is a little bit of a Twitter uh, conversation that's doing the round. And it's essentially players that are travelling a long distance on international duty um, and they're having to travel back to the UK and expected to play at the weekend. As you can see, I've got Estupinia, Matoma and McAllister in the uh, the check-in queue. Uh, I think this is Heathrow. Now, I'll use this uh, actually background as an example because this is not what travel looks like for a pro professional Premier League footballer. Okay, when you're doing long haul travel at the you know the amount these guys are paid and the the value that they are as an asset, either the Premier League team or the international squad will basically put on a private charter jet for them um, to try and avoid as much jet lag as possible, make the journey as seamless as, pos as possible and allow the players to sleep. I just think modern football is so advanced now um, and there's so much money in it, particularly in the Premier League, that I don't think we need to worry about these players not being fresh for the weekend. Um, I think there's no doubt in my mind that as long as they're fit and haven't picked up an injury, I don't think you know delays in travel or tiredness is going to affect these players. I know for a fact that Julian Alvarez is back in training for Man City which suggests that yeah the Argentinian squad they probably travel back to the UK together on the same plane that's what a lot of international teams usually do so yeah if Alvarez has made it back I would suggest McAllister has too and I would suggest Matoma and Estupinian won't be too far behind him and as for any other players that have traveled long distances unless their game was literally Friday I think they will all be fine to play at the weekend so I just should try and alleviate and provide some positivity around some of these international travel rumors I'll tell you what though, this week the captaincy is a really tough decision. I think there are three outstanding, maybe even four outstanding players I think you could give the armband to. Rashford, Salah, Matoma, definitely the top three for me. Three of the most reliable assets in FPL this season and three of the highest performing players in the Premier League. Isaac's fourth, I just think, you know, he's genuinely, you could transfer him in, but I think it's a bit of a risk putting the armband on him, given he might share minutes with Callum Wilson, whereas Rashford, Salah and Matoma, providing they're fit, they're all probably going to start for their teams and play 90 minutes for both of the doubles. Rashford, in my opinion, he just feels, my gut feel suggests he's the best captain, but obviously he did miss the in, uh, England international break through injury. He's been training on his own and you'll see an update on him in a second. I think he'll be fit to start the Newcastle game. Um, just depends on the extent of the injury as to whether it you know, holds him back a little bit in terms of um, being able to beat a man or run him behind like he's, his strengths are. I think he'll be fine. He'll only play for Man United if he's fit enough. So I've no worries about that. And Ten Hag seems to be reasonably honest in his press conferences, so far at least, as to the uh, the condition of his players. So, yeah, I think we can we can wait on news for that. I would suggest if Ten Hag says that Rashford is fit and ready to play, he's the best captain. I really like Salah as well, but I, I still think if Rashford's number one, Salah's probably my number two. Unfortunately, I don't own him. Um, and I know he's got Man City away and Chelsea away, but I wouldn't let those fixtures put me off too much. Salah has got a good record against Man City and against Chelsea. I think pretty much any team can score against those at the moment. I know they've been playing um, with their three at the back for, for Potter with Fafana, Koulibaly and Cucurella seem to have solidified things a little bit defensively. 
Um, but I still think I fancy Salah and Liverpool to score against them. Matoma has probably got the best fixtures of the, the three players. Brentford and Bournemouth. He's a good option as well if you want to be a bit of a differential. But I think Salah's my number, my, my number two. Rashford's my number one. Matoma, my number three. I did that in the wrong order, but don't think it matters too much. And finally, a little bit of a roundup of the key injury news that I found from Twitter today. I'm recording this on Thursday evening, so um, things may well change by the time this video goes up on Friday morning. We might have some press conference news, but I'll put in the comments of the video if any key news has come out. So, yeah, if other things have changed, please check out the comments and I'll try and add some, some key injury news as well. Main one, Erling Haaland has missed Man City's training session uh, this week on the Thursday. Um, so I suggest if he's not in training on Thursday, he's probably not going to play the Liverpool game. Um, so yeah, just one to consider if you still got Haaland, he might be worth um, either. Uh, to be honest, if I had Haaland, I would not want to have him because he's not going to play this week, but he could well be fit for next week. There's rumours and all sorts going around about the extent of his groin injury. Um, it could be a matter of you know coming back next week or it could be a few weeks out. We just don't know yet. One thing you can absolutely rely on is that Pep is going to be as coy as humanly possible in his press conferences and not give anything away about Haaland's fitness status because he loves to troll us FPL managers. So he's one to monitor and probably avoid for the time being because, yeah, groin injuries can be, well, range in severity and timeout and Pep's not going to give anything away. As I said on the previous one, Rashford is back in training for Man United. He was training on his own and that was a video taken, I believe, on Wednesday. Um, he was sprinting and running in straight lines on his own. I think he'll be fine to start against Newcastle, I've got to say. Um, I don't think they'd be putting up videos from Man United of him running around unless he wasn't. So, unless he was fit, sorry. So I think he'll be fine. Some news on Arsenal. And I think rather than, you know, not many people are going to have Saliba. You might well do. But I think the key news is that Saliba being out really impacts them defensively. It's going to be Rob Holding um, probably at centre-back, which in my opinion is significantly weaker than Saliba. So I will be selling Zinchenko um, this week and I think no Saliba sort of solidifies that transfer decision for me. I think their clean sheet odds get greatly reduced without Saliba in the team, especially with Rob Holding at centre-back. Um, nothing personal against Rob Holding, I just don't think he's as good and I think Arsenal will suffer as a result. And then finally, some injury news for the Newcastle team. I know a lot of people have got Sven Botman in their team waiting to hit that bench boost busted button. He's in training this week, which is really good to see, as is Nick Pope and Callum Wilson, which is unfortunate for Isaac owners. Um, never saying that you know, you'd know you want a player to get injured. But for Isaac owners, he's the threat. And if Callum Wilson was injured, Isaac's got a clear run in the team. But Callum Wilson's back fit now, so it does increase the doubt on Isaac's minutes. And that's a roundup of the injury news. As I said, if any more key things come out before the video or after the video is uploaded, I'll try and keep things up to date in the comments. So pay a visit to those just to see if there's any news. And that's the end of the video. I hope you found that useful. Just a summary of my final thoughts going into Game Week 29. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like rating on the video, subscribe to the Golden Goal channel, and be sure to check out the deadline stream coming on Saturday morning. See you in the next video.